So with Django, you can use any type of database. It mostly shines with relational databases. So the likes of Postgres, MySQL, uh, SQL Server. But the most popular one you'll find is going to be the Postgres database. And the reason why Postgres is popular is because it's open source and it has really been around. So it has been proven to really work and handle a lot of use cases. So in this video, we're going to be setting it up with our application. In this one, we're going to be doing it on a Mac. Then later, I'll make a short video to show you how to do it on Windows. So first, we need to download it to our machine. So you're going to need to come to here, postgresup.com. And then you want to go to downloads. So when you go to downloads, you're going to find that you can download the latest release. And then down here, there are like additional releases and all this. Down here, you can see that you can download this postgres.app and then it can come with different versions of postgres. So this is what you're going to download here. So I'm going to click download and then it's going to go ahead and start downloading here. So I'll keep it and then I'll wait for it to get done. Okay, so when it gets done, you're going to have this it downloaded in your downloads. So you want to double click on it. So when you double click on it, it's going to open up this installer. Then of course you want to download this. You want to drag this Postgres into your applications. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and copy the files. So let's give it a minute to do that. Okay, so when it's done, we can come over here and then search for it. So I'm going to search for Postgres and then open it. So it's going to go ahead and ask me if I want to open it. I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to close out this. Then here, when it opens up, you can set by default, it's going to be running Postgres 13. So down here, if we click here and click plus, you can see that now we can create a new Postgres server and then we can basically choose between these versions. So that's so this is the advantage of downloading this last option. So this way, if you ever want to choose between different versions of Postgres or you want to test out something on a different version, you can create it here. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this and by default, this is by default, this is not started. So if it's not started, you want to start it. Okay, so when now, when now you start it, it's going to be showing you that now it's running and it's going to show you some default databases. So over here, if we click on something like Postgres or template one, it's going to go ahead and open up in something called a, a shell. So in here, it opens this default database. So this is going to open up, then it's going to show you that now it is running this Postgres, it's running on port 5432, and then we are connected to a database called Postgres. So if you ever wanted to switch databases, so, okay, so within Postgres app, you can see that we have a database for Mac and template one. So if you ever wanted to switch between these, you can do this C. So C stands for connect. Then you can switch them. You can switch them like this. So if you do this, you can see that now we are connected to Mac. So one thing you might be asking yourself is, don't we need some kind of authentication? Don't we need to add a password somewhere? So by default, when you set up Postgres, it's not going to require you to set a password for this. But if you want to set a password, you can as well set it. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to Postgres by doing C. C is connect, then Postgres. So now we are back in Postgres. So if you wanted to create like a database for our website, we would do, we'd run an SQL command called create database. Then you give it a name. So let's call ours to do list db like this. Then you want to put a termination at the end. So if you don't put this semicolon, it will not work. So this is how SQL works. So you want to make sure you're putting a semicolon at the end. Then click enter and then you should be able to see the create database. So if you want to verify that your database exists, you can do this command and then you put an L. So if you do this, this is going to list all the databases that we have. And among this, you should be able to see that now we have to do list DB. So that's it. If for any reason you want to delete your database, you can do drop database. So when you say drop database, then you want to give a database name. So now this is going to be to do list. And then you want to put the same corner at the end, then run that. So then you can see to do list. If we run back this, you that now it's gone. Okay, but that's one of the commands you never want to, to do anywhere. So before you do it, make sure you you don't need that data or you have backed it up. All right. So let's recreate it. Now, when you recreate it and you want to connect to it, you guys know you can do C, then to do list. Okay. So now we are connected, but we don't have anything in the DB. So if we do an L, so if we wanted to see like the, the relations in there or the tables, we could do a D. 
and now you can see that there are no relations so so from here everything else is going to be managed by our Django applications so now we can quit so if you want to quit this SQL shell you can do <laughs> this sign then you do a Q like this that's gonna take you out from the shell and now you're back to your computer so one of the things you're going to notice here is when we install Postgres when we install Postgres here and then we click on any of these it opens up in a shell but what if we don't want to really be coming to open it up here or what if we want to open uh, the shell anywhere so I'm going to bring up my terminal here so here if we run PSQL which is the shell that the Postgres app uses if you run this you see that now we get PSQL command not found so we need a way to add this PSQL to our shell so right now so if you're using bash so right now i'm in bash we are going to be looking for a file called bash rc but if you're using something like zsh you can now look for your corresponding file but with bash what we want to do is let's first see where we are what we want to do is you want to go to the root of your user your user now then you want to i'm going to open vim then i'm going to open a file called, called .bash profile like this so this is going to open and here we can add a path so when it opens up you want to go in insert mode by clicking i and now here i'm going to leave a space down here so what we want is we want to now come let me bring up postgres again bring up tap like this then i'm going to open one of these dbs so we get a path so now so now we want to use this path here so i'm going to copy this up to bin so i'm going to copy this up to bin so in here now we can have another export so we can do export we want to do path equals so we're gonna use the same syntax here and also guys be careful when you're writing this because it can mess you up <laughs> or it can mess your commands so here i'm gonna put path like this then we want to put a full colon and now we can paste there this link so now to save you can click escape and then you want to save and quit so wq in vim so that's gonna do that now if we want to if we came here and did and did psql again you should see that now it's still not fine so we want to now source this psql again to get the updated changes in that file so you can do source dot bash profile like this and now if we run psql you can see that now it is working so yeah so now we can pretty much connect to a db we want you can do c then we connect to our to-do list like this and we are there if we do this again if we do this d we don't have relations yet so now let's connect this to django so we are going to go to our application so that's going to be here then we want to go to our, to our, to our settings with py file so i'm going to go to to do list then settings we want to replace what we have now so we are going to need to keep the engine now the value is going to change because now we are using postgres and now we also are going to change the database name so remember our database name is called is called to do list db like this so also we need to specify, we need to specify some other things so one of those things is going to be the user so we're going to have user then we also need to specify the password for that user all right then we will have to specify a host and a port so we're going to have host here host and then a port like this so we need to, so by default postgres is going to be running on port 5432 so let's have that one in there the host is definitely a local host then the password so our default authentication doesn't require a password so this can be anything so now for the user so if we did if we came here and listed the databases so you can set we have the databases and then the owners now our database here the owner is mac as you can see so that's what we want to have here so here we can have mac in there okay then the the name of course the name is good so for the engine when we are connecting to a postgre database we want to do django dot db dot backends dot postgresql so now if we save this you will see that now our application has stopped to work and that's because it's looking for a module called psychopg2 and it's not seeing it so i'm going to stop the server here and then i'm going to do a pip install it's i'm going to be installing a module called 
psycho pg psycho pg2 binary so this is the one we want so let's go over here and this one we want to install so i'm gonna come over here and uh, i'll type in this command and then it should go ahead and install it so once it installs let's try to set back our server and now you can see that our server is connecting to our database and it's able to tell that we have some migrations so now we can go ahead and run these migrations so i'm going to stop the server and migrate them so we can do python manage.py migrate and that's going to go ahead and apply our migrations so if you run back our server like this it should be good and now if you go to our terminal here so remember we are still connected to the db if we did an l so if we did so if we did a d like this you can see that now all our tables have been created in our database so yeah so everything is going to be done in the applications but if you ever wanted to do any managerial things then you can do that stuff using the shell okay so that's gonna do it for now one last thing i want to show you is when you ever have your database credentials like this sometimes you might be connecting to a remote db so if you're connecting to like a remote db you don't want to expose this to github so that for you guys that should already stick and it should be something you always consider so i'm gonna go in dot env and i'm gonna set up a few variables for this so i will have export i'll have db name so let's now have that then let's have the password so db password then let's also have the the host very important so host db host like this so this is gonna be localhost then the db password can be anything so test for now but if you're like on a production server you're going to need to have a password set for your db then for the name so the name is to do list db like this so let's also hide the engine so db engine okay and i'm just gonna come over here and copy it and bring it here so i'm gonna copy this bring it here and uh, the name is okay the password is okay and this is okay so now in settings.py we can use the os module to include this so we can do environ get so this is gonna be db engine so similarly for the name just gonna bring it up here can say db name so for the user similarly we would have that so db user let's have the password the host is gonna be db host db password Alright, so it's good to hide the port because if someone looks at this, they will directly know it is it is definitely post to gray and it will make you hiding this not make any sense. So let's have db port also. So let's create it. Make sure we create it. So we're gonna go over here. We have export db port 5432. Alright, so that's it. So now if we stop the server, things should still work. But if it somehow fails to connect, you want to now stop the server. And then source in the dot f oh we have an issue in here so here things should be export this should be export like this and not double so now if we source it in see it's good if we run back the server you can see that it's still good and we are our site is still on so if we try to do this so if we try to log in you can see that the invalid credentials so we are able to connect to our db so that's how you get started using the postgre database on your django website so i'm pausing here if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i'll talk to you later